welcome back to my channel I'm Sophia today I'm gonna to do a video all about fabrics and I put on my Instagram stories that I'm doing this video and that if you have any questions to get in touch so I've got a few little pointers of things that we're gonna to cover today which you guys have requested so I hope you find this video really really useful essentially I've been stocking fabrics in my shop now for just over two years and I basically wanted to go through different types of fabrics and what to look for Obviously, with the pandemic going on, none of us have been able to go to many fabric shops, shops in real life. And so I thought I'd give you a few pointers of things to look for when you're fabric shopping online, because I know that's probably quite hard a lot of the time to sort of distinguish between different types of fabric. And then I also wanted to go over um, a few terms, fabric terms, sewing terms, um, that are really, really super useful and that a lot of people I find don't know about when they come into the fabric shop. Stuff that really should help you with your patterns and your dressmaking. So we'll go over everything right from the start. We're gonna cover everything fabric based today. So the first thing is the word selvage. Now your selvage dictates the grain line of your fabric. So I have a scrap here of jersey. So the selvage edge is this edge along this side and there'll be one on one side and the other side so when your fabric comes on a roll you'll have two selvage edges and that dictates the up and down direction of your fabric and how it's manufactured your selvage also tells you the grain line so your selvage will be parallel to your grain line so if this is my selvage here my grain line is going this way now that's really important for dressmaking because all of those grain line markers on your pattern pieces they have to be parallel to your selvage edges along the grain line and that will help you cut out your fabric in the right direction on cottons they have the same selvage edge so this is another scrap here um, so this one is a one direction pattern which means that all the pineapples are going upwards so that's one direction. If we cut out our pattern piece this way around, our pattern will be upside down. So with one direction fabrics, you need to be careful of your pattern placement. So if you're cutting out pattern pieces, if the cutting layout doesn't allow for one direction patterns, um, essentially you might cut a back upside down or a front upside down, and then you'll make your top and then you'll put it on and then realize that in the mirror, you've got pineapples going up on the front and pineapples going down on the back. It's not the end of the world, but if you want it to be sort of technically perfect, then you need to keep an eye on the direction of your patterns. Again, the selvage edge is looks like this on a cotton. On Normally on cottons you have little holes where it's held onto the manufacturing machines, um, and it's got a slightly ruffled edge, but if you pull on that, um, it will not fray, so your selvages will not fray. Exactly the same as your jersey knits. Um, it's normally on a lot of cotton jerseys instead of like a frayed edge or a sealed edge It normally feels quite rough or a little bit stiffened um, I think they put some sort of spray starch on it sometimes um, But that's how you tell the selvage edge and on jerseys wherever your grain line is Horizontal to that is the stretch So if your grain line is going downwards your stretch is always going across so the majority of the stretch it will stretch a little bit that way um, but most of it will be across. In four-way stretch, it's slightly different. It stretches in all directions. But in most two-way stretches, any jersey that you buy, all the main stretch will be across, which is very important because if we cut our jersey t-shirt out the wrong direction, the stretch will be going downwards instead of across, so it will sort of get longer and thinner with wear. One of my customers have actually asked me how to tell the direction of the fabric without the selvage. This, I find, is probably one of the hardest things to do. But with jerseys, if you look at the knit of it, you should be able to see that the Vs go in one direction or the pearls go horizontally. So if you look really, really closely at the way it's constructed, you should be able to see that the Vs or the knit goes upwards, up and down, and that way you know that that's your grain line, even with the salvages not there. On cottons, however, that's slightly more difficult. Woven fabrics normally have a sort of like a cross grain to them. So if you look really closely, you should be able to see lots and lots of vertical lines as well as lots of horizontal lines. And hopefully that way you can see the direction of them. Obviously if it's got a design like this, then great, because you would just know that it's in one way. If it's plain, however, 
I don't, I personally wouldn't think that there would be much difference between the horizontal lines and the vertical lines and the horizontal lines being like flipped the other way. Because with woven fabrics, as long as you're not cutting it on a 45 degree angle, the weave of it should be the same. So if you haven't got your selvages to reference to, but you can see that cross grain, then you can use that as a guide for your grain line instead. Now, just as with our jersey, we have our selvage going this way and our stretch going this way, in cottons, obviously it's woven. So you've got a four way sort of like woven strands going across. So if we pulled it one way, there's no movement up and down vertically along the grain line, no movement. But if we sort of pull at a 45 degree angle, you'll see that it, it does stretch a lot. That's called bias. So whenever you see bias cut skirts or bias cut tops, instead of your top being cut up this way, your top's cut out at a 45 degree angle so that you get the stretch across it. And it generally helps like with cowl necks and bias cut dresses, you have that movement, that flow of fabric. That's because you've got more stretch on it because it's cut on the bias. So when you think, if you keep your fabric square, grain lines and selvages, and then horizontal lines, and then a 45 degree angle is your bias. And that's how you make bias cut skirts or bias cut tops. You cut them at a 45 degree angle. Okay, now I want to talk about fabric weights. So essentially you're either on a lot of fabric online stores, they have a weight and it will say like lightweight, medium weight, heavyweight. Not very helpful. Um, I think a lot of people, depending on the fabric of them, will just decide what they would call it. Um, but if you're lucky enough to have a fabric shop that puts the GSM on it, um, very, very helpful. Essentially, the smaller the GSM or the grams per square meter, the thinner the fabric is. So if a jersey is 180 GSM and then another one is 200 GSM, the 200 GSM jersey is thicker or weightier than the 180 GSM. So the smaller the number, the thinner the fabric. So a viscose or a rayon, something really lightweight and flowy, it might be like 120 GSM. That way you know it's quite thin and quite flowy. Um, obviously the structure of it is slightly different depending on the fabric that you're actually buying. But the smaller the GSM, the smaller the grams per square meter, the thinner the fabric is. Being able to tell just from photos what weight a fabric is is very very difficult if there is a video of the fabric moving so sometimes i take pictures of my fabric twisted and then you can see how thick the like ridges are and i know that sounds a bit strange but if there's a picture of it moving or folded sometimes you can see if it makes like big folds and you know it's quite weighty and if it makes like little sort of like wavy folds and you know it's slightly drapier that's one trick but other than looking at the gsm um, it's really, really difficult to tell. One question I did get asked is different weights of fabrics and what they're used for. Um, that's quite a tricky one to answer because it really depends on what you're doing. But if you imagine that when they refer to something lightweight, they mean something slightly thinner, flowy, maybe a little bit see-through. Um, so, you know, it might be something that you have to line or it might be something like perfect for a blouse. Um, so that's what I would consider lightweight. Medium weight in my head is more like quilting cottons, things that are easy to sew, um, not see through, have a little bit more rigidity to them um, and just overall a little bit more sturdy in a fabric. Um, and then heavy or heavyweight fabrics, um, that's more, you know, your jeans, your jackets, coating fabrics, um, possibly like sweatshirt fabrics that are, if, if you have a heavyweight sweatshirt fabric, expect something very thick and snuggly, maybe with a fleece on the inside. Um, so honestly think of it like weight. If it's lightweight, it, it's flowy. Medium weight, in between, quite easy to sew. Heavyweight, you might need a, a, to change your needle or something that might be a little bit more tricky to sew on your sewing machine. Okay, so first, jerseys as a type of fabric. It's one of my most popular fabrics that I sell in my shop here. 
different jerseys have different contents. Now, fibre content or, you know, yarn woven content is really difficult because every single manufacturer blends in different ways. Jerseys will always have a form of elastane or spandex or something elastic mixed in with it. Normally between sort of four and eight percent of like elastane spandex, that's the stretchy part. And then it will be combined with things like cotton, polyester, things like that, so that you have a blended with the elastane to make a stretchy cotton or stretchy jersey. Cotton jerseys are slightly softer than man-made jerseys. So if there's a cotton blend or an organic cotton jersey, they will generally be a little bit softer because they've got that natural fiber with it rather than having a sort of a man-made fiber. Now, single jerseys are basically, if you knit at all, you have a purl side and a knit side. So the knit side is the little Vs going upwards and the purl side are the waves going sideways. Now, in a single jersey, the back will be purl, the front or the right side will be knit, and that's a single jersey. Normally a little bit thinner, a little bit flowy, great for t-shirts, leggings, things like that. Double jersey or interlock jersey is two layers of that single jersey together. So instead of there being a purl side and a knit side, the wrong sides or the purl sides are sandwiched together. So from the outside, both sides, you'll have your knit side, your right side. So generally interlocked or double jerseys look the same on both sides. And they're generally a little bit weightier, a little bit thicker, great for sort of tops, sweaters, things like that. And they don't curl as much as single jerseys, so the edges don't roll in as much because they're slightly thicker and weightier. It flattens it down. Also jersey, single jersey naturally, curls and rolls to the right side. So because the wrong sides are sandwiched, sandwiched together, the edges don't roll at all really, because they're sort of working against each other. So interlock jersey or double jersey is just two layers of single jersey together. There is also French terries, loop back jerseys, fleece back jerseys, things brushed cotton back jerseys. So all that means is the front is that knit side, that jersey side, that sort of knitted look side and the reverse is a slightly different texture. So loop back is basically tiny little loops. Fleece back is obviously fleecy, softer. Brushed cotton, same as fleece, it's just got that lovely smooth texture to the back. All those things just make different textured jerseys. So when you're looking at different things, see what the description is. And also, if you've got a, a fabric shop that sort of lists things that you can make out of it, very, very useful. If it says things like bodycon dresses and stuff like that, you know that it's a little bit more uh, rigid and smooth as a texture. If it says like flowy t-shirts, leggings, baby grows, then you know it's that sort of thinner, single weight jersey um, that's really easy to sew with. So in terms of sweatshirting fabrics, obviously we spoke about the loop back and fleece back, things like that. Um, loop back jersey and French terry are basically the same thing but some, basically, French terries are usually got that extra bit of stretch in them, but you can get loop back fabrics that don't have stretch in them. So if you see a loop back sweatshirting, just double check that it actually has stretch in it, because sometimes it will be like more of a rigid sweatshirting with no movement, almost like a sweatshirting fabric. Some sweatshirting fabrics don't have stretch in them. So if they're, that, that's where it gets slightly tricky because you might look online and you, you might see loop back sweatshirting, but it doesn't have much stretch in it. Whereas if you buy a loop back jersey or a French terry, that would usually have stretch in it. So just read the description. Also be careful when you're ordering French terries. Don't just assume that there is a lot of elastane in it. Sometimes there's hardly any. Um, so make sure it's got at least 5% elastane in it to make sure that it's like wearable, movable. Okay, so someone asked me if I could show different types of jerseys and a use for them. So this first one is a organic cotton jersey. Um, so I know you can't feel it, but it's super soft, super smooth. As you can see, even though it's white, it's not that see-through when I put my hand up against it. Um, a cotton blend jersey I would use for children's fabrics or like a soft cotton t-shirt. Um, just because it's super soft against your skin and it's not see-through and it's just a good medium weight. So this is actually 95% cotton, 
90% spandex and it's 190 grams per square meter so you can see that it's not a light it's not so light that it's like drapey it, ha it just has a lovely t-shirting weight fabric to it okay so this next jersey has a similar sort of um, composition as the first organic one it's a 96% cotton 4% elastane um, but this one's woven a little bit tighter so the weight is actually a slightly heavier I don't know the exact weight but it does feel slightly heavier and you can see when I stretch it instead of it being smooth it's got like a more knitted appearance so this is a really lovely weight jersey but because it's heavier it's best for structured tops so imagine like a Nora jumper from Tinning the Buttons or something that holds its shape well or like a toaster sweater but something lightweight it's got that lovely light t-shirt weight fabric but it holds its shape a little better so that's perfect for something like that this next one is one of my new tensile blend jerseys again like the first one it's 190 grams per square meter so if i put my hand up against it it's you can still see my hand but because it's plain white um you know it's slightly more obvious than the first one um now this is because of the blend of tensile um it's slightly more drapey it's super soft and smooth so you can see even though it's the same weight it's got a slightly more drape to it because it's got that tensile fiber instead of um cotton um and it's just this is a beautiful jersey for t-shirts and tops again um, but something that you might want a little more drape with it. So if you have a polyester or a viscose or a modal blend jersey, that's what you'll get. That sort of lovely weight still that isn't see-through, but it's got a little bit more drape to it. Okay, this last one is one of my favourite jerseys that I have in. Um, and I used to have it in coral as well, but it sold out so quickly and now I can't get any more. Um, so this one is actually a loop back jersey. So you can see from the front, it's got that lovely glitter texture to it. And on the back, it's loop back. So the lines aren't as obvious. So it's got a lovely, lovely weight to it. This one is 85% cotton, 10% lurex and 5% elastane. So the lurex is the sort of stretchy metallic part of it. Um, so it's still got a lov lovely cotton blend um, it's still smooth and soft but it's got that man-made polyester through it to give it that sort of glitter texture but the manufacturing process means it's got a loop back so it holds its shape really well it's still just as stretchy as the other jerseys um, but it has a little bit more structure to it so the weight is slightly higher just like the grey jersey we saw earlier I get asked a lot about the type different types of thread so especially on my website, I've got Goodman threads in cotton and polyester, and I have overlocking threads. I do have a lot of customers that come in and buy overlocking threads a lot, um, and I just let them know that they are definitely overlocking threads. And what that means is, because they are cheaper, you get probably a thousand meters for a pound versus like a hundred meters for one pound 95 with the Goodman ones. Um, overlocking thread is lower quality thread. Um, mainly because if you have an overlocker, you would use four threads at the same time and you'd, there would be a lot of wastage. So if you were putting Guttermans in your overlocker, which let me tell you, some I've known customers to do, and don't ever do that because you, it will cost you an absolute fortune. Um, overlocking threads are cheaper, lower quality. They tend to fray in normal sewing machines quite a lot. Um, and they're normally like a, a looser, um, spun cotton um, so that they are a little bit more they're not as smooth basically so they're more likely to snap so in an overlocker great because it just goes through all the machines you're using four threads at the same time and you waste loads of thread so that's what overlocking threads are cotton and polyester normal sewing threads like Gutterman threads um, or coats or any of those brands um, the general rule is if you have a natural fiber fabric wool cotton linen you use cotton thread man-made fabrics viscose polyester sweatshirting um use a polyester thread um it's down to the washing so if you have a natural fiber like a cotton like 100 percent cotton um there could be a slight difference in the washing that the polyester thread will react differently in the washing than the cotton will and whereas if you use a cotton thread, it all re reacts the same. Um, it, it won't be that obvious to you. 
So if you're really not that worried, do what I do and I just use whatever thread I happen to have in the same colour. Um, sometimes I've bought, I mostly use polyester for a lot of what I do, um, just because I find my machine likes it better. Cotton, because it is nat more natural, it's slightly more fibrous. Um, so even a really good quality cotton, especially if you're doing a lot of sewing and in a tricky fabric, it does fray a little bit more. Um, but polyester is man-made, so it just sort of glides through it. And I'm a big fan of the new Gutterman recycled polyesters that are made from plastic bottles. So that's another great reason to use a polyester thread if it's recycled. Um, but it is just personal preference. Um, but the rule of thumb is if you have a natural fabric with natural fibres, use the cotton. If you have a man-made fabric with processed fibres, use a polyester thread. So one thing a few of you have asked about is viscose and rayons and the difference between them and what sort of things are better to use for what. Um, viscose is basically a form of rayon. Um, it's the manufacturing process. They're both made out of wood pulp, but the manufacturing process between rayon and viscose is just slightly different. Um, sadly, they're both man-made fibres when it comes to blending with the wood pulp. There's a lot of chemicals that are added to them but the manufacturing process is actually really fast and really cheap. So generally rayons and viscoses are actually really good value for money. Um, they're made to be that sort of flowy, lightweight fabric, perfect for dresses and skirts and summer jumpsuits, things like that. Um, but they're very, very similar in texture. Viscose tends to actually wrinkle more and both viscose and rayon do have a habit of shrinking quite a lot. So pre-washing viscose and rayon fabrics is essential um, because they do have a habit of shrinking quite a lot. So another good thing about viscose and rayon is that they're both really breathable fabrics. Now viscose was made to imitate silk. So imagine like a man-made blended version of a natural silk and rayon has like that silky texture but it's meant to be more cotton like so when you see a rayon that's more cotton based if you sort of compare it to like a cotton poplin or something similar whereas a viscose is meant to be more silk like slightly more textured maybe a little bit rougher but it's got a lovely smooth drapey finish i actually prefer and i think a lot of people refer prefer viscose to rayon just because it drapes a lot nicer it's so much nicer for those like lovely flowy dresses um so if it's got a viscose fabric that would be better than a rayon in my opinion so there are loads of different types of cottons and cotton based fabrics obviously we've covered cotton jerseys that are blended with elastane Cotton as a fabric has been really popular over the years. Obviously the manufacturing process is actually not very environmentally friendly, almost as bad as a man-made fabric that's got loads of chemicals injected into it, mainly because of the amount of water and the amount of waste that cotton production produces. But it's still a great fabric to use for a lot of projects. Obviously it's used in most high street branded clothing, cotton is probably the most popular fabric that you can buy and there's loads of different types so obviously we have cotton blends there's cotton poplins shirting fabrics um, cotton canvases that are thicker denim things like that they're all forms of cotton cotton poplins are or seersuckers things like that are thinner lighter weight fabrics and then you have your cotton canvases your denims things like that that are a lot heavier weight so again look for those gsms or the weights of what that fabric shop has decided to sort of refer to it as because that will help you decide what type of cotton it would be best for. When people ask me about flowy dresses, cotton blends with polyester or things like that are normally a little bit more flowy. Um, anything viscosy is definitely more flowy um, than say like a cotton poplin. Cotton poplins tend to be lovely and lightweight, but sometimes they are a little thin. So instead of having like a lovely cotton dress, you might also need to line it because of the thinness of the fabric. Um, but again, I think the more fabric you buy and the more you sort of like shop around for, you can compare fabrics a lot easier. And that way you sort of build up your knowledge. I'm still not 100% on all my fabrics, do not get me wrong. Sometimes when I haven't ordered a swatch from a manufacturer, and I've just ordered fabric, it's coming and I've gone, oh, that's a little bit thicker than I thought it was gonna be, or that's a little bit thinner than I thought it was gonna be. Um, so now as I've sort of gone on over the, next, the past few years, 
I have sort of zoned in on what I definitely like and I definitely don't like in a fabric. One person sent me a message asking about how to work out the softness or texture of a cotton when you're buying it online. This is probably really, really hard to do, especially if you're shopping online. Um, I try, if it was personally me, I would try looking closely at the photos of the fabric. If they've got a close up or one where they've shown you the scale of the fabric, try and look to see if you can see any texture that you can find. Now, like I said before, look at the GSM because that, that way you'll know how many grams per square meter there are, so how thin or how thick the cotton is. And if there's no real sort of texture on it, what have they called the cotton? Have they called it a cotton poplin? Have they called it a shirting fabric? Have they called it cotton canvas? And that way you sort of know or roughly work out what they actually think that you should make that garment out of. If it's suggesting it for dungarees, trousers, canvas shorts or like thick shorts then you know that it's sort of a heavier weight cotton if they're suggesting it for um lightweight blouses and shirts then you know it might be slightly thinner but finding out the texture of the softness of it is really difficult i would say that with jerseys that's slightly easier and i would always recommend you look for a cotton blend jersey if you want a softer jersey and if you want it to be even softer an organic cotton jersey is just perfect, great for children's clothes. One person has asked me what patterns to use for different fabrics, and that's actually sadly a really broad question and one that I'm finding really difficult to answer, mainly due to the fact that every single pattern will request different fabrics. So instead of, I know this is hard, but if you can buy a pattern and then buy the fabric for that pattern, great. If, however, you have bought some fabric that you love and you're thinking, well, I don't have a purpose for that yet, but I'll put it to one side until I find something, make a note of what fab fiber content that fabric was, what weight it is, whether it's stretchy, non-stretchy, and attach it to the fabric. That way, if you then find a pattern, it might request something similar. You can then refer back to that fabric that you have in your stash and know, actually, this would be perfect for that. That would be my advice. If we take a Timmy the Buttons pattern, for example, like the Clio, on the back there's always fabric suggestions. So on this Clio, it, the fabric suggestions are heavy or medium weight woven fabrics that hold their shape. Great. Such as denim, corduroy, cotton drill, gabardine, canvas or wool. So that way we know that it's asking for a really structured fabric. So a medium weight or heavy weight woven fabric so we know medium weight might be a denim if you order lightweight denim off the internet you'll know that it can be really thin more like a chambray whereas a um, medium weight heavyweight denim is going to be thick and rigid same as wool like any wool blend fabric is going to be a little bit thicker and heavier so that way we know that we want something that holds its shape so when you're shopping online, you can just literally search cotton drill and see what comes up or denim, see what comes up and then go through the list until you find something that you really like to make your pattern out of. Okay, so some of you have asked about different needle types for different fabrics. So if you're ever unsure, there are needles that say what fabrics to use for which type. So for jersey needles, ballpoint needles, you would use them on your jerseys or your stretch fabrics. For denims or jean materials, thicker weight materials, you can use a denim or a jeans needle. <laughs> Luna, shush. And then for thin fabrics like viscose, rayon, silks, you can use sharps needles, which have a much finer point so that they don't pierce the fabric as much. For everything else, you can use a universal needle, and most of the time universal needles will work in the majority of your fabrics. But you can change the needles to benefit your work. So as you can see, I've got loads of different fabrics in the shop that I love so, so much. Most of the fabrics that I actually choose are ones that I personally like. So I've got different blends of jerseys for different patterns. I've got tensile blends as well as viscoses, double gauze, which is like a lovely two layers of lightweight cotton sandwich together. Um, I've got quilting cottons, which are generally more structured cottons. Again, the GSM would be slightly higher than a cotton poplin, for example. But my new fabrics from Meat Milk are my absolute favourites. 
So they're basically blended with Tencel, which is a, a cellulose fibre, basically, of wood pulp. It's, it's very similar to what um, viscose and rayon is made out of, but the manufacturing process is way more eco-friendly. So if you, say, had a Tencel jersey and you took the elastane out of it, all of the fabric would actually compost. So it's great for the environment and it uses so much less water than manufacturing cotton or man-made fabrics. So you can shop all my fabrics online if you're in the UK. Obviously you can if you're worldwide as well, but you'll have to pay a little bit extra for the postage. Um, I really hope this video has been useful to some of you in any way. And if you have any questions that you want to ask me or if there's anything that I haven't covered in this video, please comment below and I will do my very, very best to answer them. Happy handmade, everyone. Yeah.